There's something that happens when a black woman achieves success and especially power. Some people feel the need to humiliate her. We've seen it in our own lives with our mothers, wives, sisters, friends, leaders who have achieved success. They have to overcome this on the way. Trump clowns say that Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, even though she was the Attorney General of California, the largest population state in the U.S., elected to the United States Senate, served on Senate committees, elected Vice President of the United States, and cast tie-breaking votes as President of the Senate. If the plane has Wi-Fi, I'm fucking there, because I didn't write anything, and I'm, I'm not eloquent, but I am here, I am in this. Kamala just broke Zoom. 136k white women overcome glitchy call to raise over $1 million. The Zoom fundraising event dubbed, White Women, Answer the Call, asked women nationwide to join the live stream chat and invite their contacts to support Harris, with speakers including the pop star Pink and actress Connie Britton. At one point, organizer Shannon Watts said more than 136,000 people joined the call. As the number of people in the Zoom call grew, the platform began to crash and glitch, eventually freezing entirely and turning over to a black screen with a message, we'll be right back. It soon reloaded, showing the shocked faces of the women on the virtual call. We weren't kidding when we said we broke Zoom, remarked attendee Aaron Gallagher when the video chat came back online. You know, interesting, white women. I mean, here we are. I, I have to admit, when I was writing stuff down, I was like, Karen's for Kamala? I don't know. You know, why is it so difficult, as Glennon was saying, to acknowledge and address ourselves as white women. As white women, we are the ones that have the privilege, of course, and we too have had to fight and continue to fight for our equality, our selfhood, our freedom, but we have whatever privileges our male, white male counterparts have had the mercy and good sense to bestow on us, and then whatever else of it we have managed to take for ourselves often being led by, as many have said earlier tonight, the leadership of our sisters of color who have fought and fought and continue to fight for their righteous place on God's green earth. I am here tonight embracing myself in your incredible, profound white women midst because we've got a fucking job to do y'all. On Sunday, when Biden stepped down from his run for president and endorsed Kamala Harris, the world blew up. Did you feel it? It was seismic, cosmic even. Which brings me back to us. Beautiful, beautiful white women. Here we are contemplating how we too rise up from this beautiful glistening rubble of opportunity into our own love of self family, community, society, democracy, and country. We've been given permission to love ourselves enough to see a different future as of Sunday and to fight like hell for it. And as we fight like hell and celebrate and speak out for Kamala, let's just remember who she is, an incredibly qualified lawyer and prosecutor who was also attorney general, who was also a senator who was also vice president and is also vice president, who took down criminals and stood up for the rule of law above all else. And oh yeah, she's a woman. Because she is a woman, she also will listen and lead with empathy, integrity, and the power of the truth. Trust this moment my fellow white women, my friends, so many of you I know are out there right now. Let it carry you forward bravely, defiantly for all of those who have come before you, for all the times you wish you'd fought harder, had more courage, could have changed the world for your sons and daughters and loved ones. Trust that this moment is the opportunity for a movement of unity and righteousness. Stand proud and self love as the leader you have been called to be. Hey guys, been on the Kamala for President webinar and we keep getting shut down because too many people. Uh, I think we're breaking the internet once again. So yeah, we um, already raised like $100,000 in like eight minutes. So we're keeping it going. Super excited. This is a very exciting time and 
you know, like I said before, I feel like I have so much hope for our country now. And, you know, I know not everyone feels this way, but I do. And I think that us focusing on the positive and focusing on hope and rooting for Kamala, if that's what you choose to do, I think that wins out over hate every time, if you know what I'm saying. If you know, you know. So yeah, I am, it's a very exciting time and I, I just feel the energy. I feel the excitement in so many people, young women, you know, young people mostly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very exciting. And I know we've already raised, like, I think I already said this, a hundred thousand dollars in a couple minutes. So keeping it going, but yeah, the zoom is not coming back up. Oh dear. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep you posted. Y'all, we broke the internet, literally. There are over 100,000 white women for Harris on a Zoom call right now, and we literally broke the internet. Like, Pink is on there, Glennon Doyle is on there, Andrea Gibson is on there, Amy Andrews from South Carolina is on there. So many amazing women and thinkers and leaders are on there, and y'all, it's like, we broke it. Like, the Zoom is down, there are so many women um, so it just goes to show that this is really happening. We're coming online. We also broke the donation link because so many people were trying to give money to support President Harris. It is so exciting. It is really happening. Oh my God, I've never been so proud. So I was just on the answer the call for white women to come through for Kamala. And we were on a, the webinar, and first thing they told us is we just hit a world record for most people ever on a single Zoom call. After that, Zoom started to crash. There's too many people. And at the same time, the donation site crashed. I couldn't get in. I made a donation. Once I hit uh, the credit card information, it just kept going round and round. And then they told us the site had crashed, and they're trying to find alternate sites. We crashed the systems. White women came through. Uh, I'm so proud right now. I am so proud of my fellow Kamala supporters. I've never been so proud. We crashed the fucking systems. That's what I'm talking about. And it scared the shit out of me. And it made me pause because I have always been in the fight um, I've always put myself out there. I've always put myself on the line for what I really truly believe. I will die on that mountain. And it scared me how organized hatred, how organizing hatred can be. And I've been waiting for love to show up. And what I'm watching tonight and I'm wa what I'm watching when Joe Biden, who is a good man who is a man of service who has given his life to service who does not pull out the worst in us whose family is of service when i watched him make that incredibly difficult decision to step aside for the good of his country because that is patriotism i was floored and i felt I felt like good can win. I felt like love can win. I felt for the first time in a while, like, okay, okay, we can do this. We can do this. We can fight. We can get our asses kicked. We can get in the ring. Love can win. And tonight is um, proof of that. And I do think in 102 days that we will all put our sweaty armpits on each other and cry and dance and laugh and I think it's time I think it's it's time that we fought back and were relentless and did whatever we had to do so with that Megan do you want to bring that old thing back bring that old thing back bring that old... let's fucking go there it okay. is kind of let's a lot of to scream that with Megan Rapino. holy shit I don't know what to do anymore. I, I will lose. I'm not a person that loses hope, but I'm feeling like I'm losing. And I'm out to everybody. Um, I'm left thinking in this moment, like, how did we get here with Kamala Harris? And now she's like 
running for president. We got here because Kelly Loeffler unwisely um, tried to dunk on the WNBA um, and it went horribly wrong and they organized as did all of Georgia uh, led by the indomitable Stacey Abrams and flipped those Senate seats and rallied the entire country to get not only Joe Biden, but Kamala Harris in office. And you know, now here we are, they did such an incredible job. Let us take our cues from them. 40,000 black women just the other day, like literally in the snap of a finger, uh, win with black women, um, getting organized and getting around this. White women, this is our opportunity to show up not only for ourselves, but for black women. They've given us the whole playbook um, on how to show up and energize and be organized and um, really do the right thing and to tap into all of our networks. Um, so let's just follow their lead. This is going to be an incredible time. Um, it's going to be hard. We all know that, um, but we can do hard things, right? Um, just a couple of things. Everybody has said it, but like organize, organize, organize. Keep talking to people, coffee shops, do a fundraiser, um, conversations that you have. Like you have no idea how many conversations those people are having. So keep doing that. Donate, obviously, if you have those means. Donate, donate, donate. Get your friends to donate. Um, every dollar counts, as we know. Um, and vote. Nothing really matters if you don't vote. Um, so many... People and women have fought for our right to vote and have continued to keep that safe and continue to give us the opportunity to uh, live in this amazing country and continue to fight for our country living up to uh, what the promise is. I think Colin said that the other night and I loved that. Um, so get out there, vote, make sure you're registered, make sure your friends are registered, everybody. Um, I think probably everybody on this call is, but um, let's go for the next hundred and some odd days. Um, we need to focus on winning, not policing each other be perfect. Um, Harris's campaign slogan is let's win this. So if it doesn't serve that goal, don't waste your energy. Um, we can do this. We can do this. This is just the beginning, but we can do this. There is no other option but to see this through and then stay in the fight help this administration. Um, so for us, for white women, this is step one. Um, before we go, I do want to share something that I learned as a WNBA player, as a white player in a predominantly black league. There were times to step to the front and lead. We had privilege. There were times to step to the back and follow. Each have importance, but you're not always going to get it right. Stay open to both at all times and you'll definitely find your way. Um, you know, the story of the WNBA and its players and you know, how we flipped the Senate seat or helped flip one, flip one by strategically supporting Reverend Warnock in 2020 has now been told. Have you guys watched The Power of the Dream? Everybody, sorry, you need to donate and click that link and then you also need to go to Amazon, is it Amazon Prime? Yeah. You need to go to Amazon Prime and you need to click The Power of the Dream. It is unbelievable. It's a masterclass in organization. It's a masterclass in what we're trying to do here as white women and like exactly what you're saying. So it's also just like incredible and there's a beautiful Kamala Harris part in there. So, okay, go ahead. Sorry, next tip. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the story's been told and it's compelling. It's clearly inspiring. It was also hard as shit. I mean, it was hard. It was scary. We had days of uncertainty. We had no idea what was gonna happen to us and that was very real. And if you feel those things, it means you're doing it right. It means you're doing it right. So with that, Megan, you wanna bring that old thing back? Bring that old thing back. Let's fucking go!
There's something that happens when a black woman achieves success and especially power. Some people feel the need to humiliate her. We've seen it in our own lives with our mothers, wives, sisters, friends, leaders who have achieved success. They have to overcome this on the way. Trump clowns say that Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, even though she was the Attorney General of California, the largest population state in the U.S., elected to the United States Senate, served on Senate committees, elected Vice President of the United States, and cast tie-breaking votes as President of the Senate. They say she's inexperienced, she's not black, honest, she's... In my opinion, the Democrats have really got to switch up gears, all right? The days of, you know, Michelle Obama once said, when they go low, we go high, that's over. Uh, there's some school of thought that if the pig is in the mud, you don't get down and wrestle with a pig. I got a totally different uh, opinion on that. The Democrats can't just sit by and let the former liar be like a pig. Yeah, because no, the language used today on this Fox and Friends interview is not the sort of language you would expect from somebody who wants to be a president of the United States of America and is the senior figure within a political party. Uh, and it's it's quite obvious why the likes of Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, why they say garbage, why they get away with it. When you have, and I use that word garbage, you have a former president uh, using language which is just so disrespectful, it is untrue. But at Fox, they find it funny. Somebody, in fact, I had two comments the other day. I don't want to hear about Fox, blah, blah, blah. No, we are going to put a light and literally expose Fox every single day. Ignoring them is not the answer. They find it funny that Trump calls a, a future president garbage. Kamala Harris is not garbage in any way, shape or form. Vice president and also a former attorney general. She has worked her position. If they don't fight back, it's setting a precedent, kind of like, oh, well, we can say what they like. And if he's saying that about her in public, oof, I dread to think what he says in private. It's got to be called out. Those at Fox have got to be called out. Who the hell are these people anyway? Why are they so important? Just because they're on a cable news station doesn't mean they're allowed to set the agenda, set the line of what's right and what's wrong. Every single day they spread SHIT and people say, oh, it's just Fox. We have to call it out. Exactly the same with people on social media. It is a form of bullying, a form of hate, and just the worst possible. I mean, he was just full of shite today. Shite. Uh, Kamala Harris has given two speeches uh, now that she's the candidate, and she's going, they, they're almost identical speeches. This is what she's doing. She's going after you this way. Watch. Before I was elected vice president, before I was elected United States senator, I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. And in this campaign, I promise you, I will proudly put my record against his any day of the week. As the attack, what's the retort? Well, I think it's disgusting, and I get a kick out of one thing. They say, sir, be nice. You just got hit with a bullet. Maybe he's changed. Be nice. And I'd love to be nice, but I'm dealing against real garbage. Uh, when you hear that, they've weaponized the justice system against me. They've indicted me four times. They've pushed other lawsuits onto me. It's never happened in this country. This is like a third world country, what they've done, a banana republic. Every single court case that I have is pushed on by them. They've taken the Justice Department, used local DAs, and used local attorney generals. Every single case I have, and I just won the big one in Florida that Biden didn't win, what happened to Biden is they called him incompetent. He can run for president, but Document he's incompetent case. to represent himself in court. But just so you know, uh, they push all these cases on me. They're the ones that started. And then they say, I'm a prosecutor. He's a criminal. They're the ones. Every case is started by them. And I'm winning the cases. But every case, and the big one I just won in Florida was just thrown out by a, a brilliant judge, to be honest with you. Eileen Tan. And it's, 
It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful that they can do this. It's called weaponization, so, and it does happen but, in but, other so countries. So, Mr. President, it, it's, but does it get it's under your skin? never happened in this country before. Does that get under your skin when those comments are made? Because that's what they're meant to do. It's not a question of getting under your skin. You fight back. I fought back, I think, very valiantly. I'm serious. The Dems are going to come at the Republican Party, at the Trump train from every single angle. All of those who have big followings that post all the time, have somebody fact-checking as they post, have somebody replying as they post. Every single time there's a radio interview or something, have somebody ready to jump on that radio station's phone in. Every single time there's a TV appearance, have somebody clipping it, whether it's in Kentucky, whether it's in Miami, be on the case. All right. They can't keep on letting somebody from the Republican Party like Marjorie Taylor Greene or somebody on Fox set the agenda. Get ahead of them. Use humor. Use facts. Use truth. They are rattled. They really are rattled. J.D. Vance can't stand Trump. He hasn't changed his opinion. Is anything for power. So the divisions. Forget about CNN, by the way. CNN is nobody's friend. There may be a couple of individuals that react. And if you're one of these people watching saying, oh, I don't want you playing Fox there, blah, blah, that you're, you're part of the problem. Ignoring it is not the solution. Challenging it, challenge it is the solution. This, there are people who watch Fox nonstop. They're not suddenly going to change their opinion, but the conversation can be affected. These clowns on Fox, why is nobody ever stopping them in the street? Harassing them, asking them the questions. You're allowed to ask somebody a question. Why has Jesse Waters never been told to his face, well, you're a bit of a liar? Not in an aggressive way, but he puts it out there. Why has nobody actually ever said, oh, you're, you're setting an example, didn't you? Do you leave your wife while you're having an affair? At the end of the day, you have somebody who is very frail, overweight, has one foot in the grave, cheats on his wife pays money to porn stars, who wants to be president, and is a criminal. Those are the facts. But more important... So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. And in this campaign, I promise you, I will proudly put my record against his any day of the week. As the attack, what's the retort? Well, I think it's disgusting, and I get a kick out of one thing. They say, sir, be nice. You just got hit with a bullet. Maybe he's changed. Be nice. And I'd love to be nice, but I'm dealing against real garbage uh, when you hear that. They've weaponized the justice system against me. They Kamala Harris is not only the border czar, she is also the czar of chaos. And sh her policies have destroyed American. I yield. This is where it's really important, and this is why we do highlight Fox. So, Kamala Harris will go on and maybe she will talk about fiscal policies in terms of, I don't know, how much money should go towards public education, how much money should be spent on infrastructure, foreign policy. When have you heard Trump talk finance? I don't mean, ah, oh, built a building, but actually real proper intrinsic details on finance. When have you ever heard him sit down and talk about uh, education curriculums? When have you heard him talk on foreign policy? Today he's asked on Fox, oh, the Middle East situation. He's saying, oh, it'll be sorted out once he gets in power. Rubbish. The guy couldn't even speak about the Middle East without a teleprompter for five minutes. Somebody should say to him next time, Mr. President, Mr. Don Shitsy Pantsy, whatever name you like, you've got five minutes. Talk about your foreign, talk about your foreign policy. We know you don't like NATO. What are your solutions? Tell us the historical uh, relationship between um, NATO and the US. Tell us exactly who you would have around the table uh, when it comes to the Middle East and what would your opening conversation be? Make him answer the questions. He wants to talk all the tittle tattle, all the rubbish. That's why he says things like garbage. It's because it is a distraction. It is getting away from the conversation. It allows talk radio. It allows those on blue tick Twitter or social media, the commentators. It gives them something to talk about, which isn't about policy. Never about the money in your pocket. Never about your health bills. 
or general bills. Never, never, never. The Democrats have got to step a gear up. The campaign trail in his first big rally since Biden exited the race, Trump riled up his supporters with angry rhetoric focused, of course, on Vice President Kamala Harris, calling her a liar and an ultra-radical liberal. He is standing by that divisive tone. Here's what the former president and Republican nominee said just moments ago. She's a San Francisco radical. She's actually, I think, a much worse, in a way, a much worse candidate. She's the most radical person probably that we've had in office, let alone the office of the presidency. I'd love to be nice, but I'm dealing against real garbage. Wow. CNN Steve Contorno joins me now. I think that might be the first time we've heard a presidential candidate call another American garbage. Um, give us some sense. This it sounds like this is the way things are going. Absolutely, Sarah. And let's be clear, nice Trump only lasted about 30 minutes into his convention speech. And it's certainly nice Trump did not make the, the stage last night in North Carolina. Instead, he was on the attack from almost the moment he took that stage. Listen to what he had to say about his potential new opponent, Vice President Harris. So now they bring in this one who's worse than him. She's worse than him. Because he's a fake liberal. You know, he wasn't that liberal. He was fake. She's a real liberal. She really is a real liberal. She's much worse than him. And when you're dealing with these people, they're very dangerous people. When you're dealing with them, you can't be too nice. You really can't be. So if you don't mind, I'm not going to be nice. Is that okay? From there, he had launched a litany of attacks against Harris, her record, tying her to the Biden administration, really testing out how they intend to define Harris in the coming weeks. And as Jeff said, that opportunity for the Trump campaign to give their first impression of Harris to the American people is now underway. And it is, it is a frantic sprint by the uh, Trump campaign because they know this campaign has changed dramatically in the past week. They have built a campaign to go up against an uh, unpopular 81-year-old incumbent. Well, now they have a much more dynamic, a much more unknown opponent in, in, in Vice President Harris, someone who potentially could appeal to voters that Joe Biden was having sh uh, trouble uh, keeping in the Democratic tent. And so now you are seeing the first and early attempts by the Trump campaign to define Harris. And one of the more interesting criticisms was that he took a shot at Harris for not appearing in Washington for the Israeli prime minister's address to the Congress. He actually said she's, quote, totally against the Jewish people. That's a remarkable statement given that her own husband is Jewish and also his vice presidential nominee also did not appear at that speech either, Sarah. But you're seeing these attacks come out. They are, will be sharpened in the coming weeks and they will not end until November. All right, Steve Contorno, things are going to get nasty. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Kate. Southwest Airlines announcing major changes today. Getting When you go to the polls in this country as a parent, you should have more power. You should have more of an ability to speak your voice in our democratic republic than people who don't have kids. Let's face the consequences and the reality. If you don't have as much of an investment in the future of this country, maybe you shouldn't get nearly the same voice. Now, people will say, and I'm sure the Atlantic and the Washington Post and all the usual suspects will criticize me about this in the coming days. Well, doesn't this mean that non-parents don't have as much of a voice as parents? Doesn't this mean that parents get a bigger say in how our democracy functions? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, there is so much excitement in the Democratic Party right now. Uh, I have not seen this much mobilization and energy in such a short window of time, probably not since, you know, the, the Obama convention time, right, when people saw him in that, st in that stadium and, and there was so much energy across the party. But we see that right now in the Democratic Party. Uh, and it's amazing. And we're just trying to, this is the great thing. 
for the last three and a half years, thanks to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, we've been able to rebuild all of the parties in our 50 states so that they can now accommodate this energy and focus this energy into doing the grassroots activities as, that are necessary to win these close elections. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's a stark contrast to the Republican Party that doesn't have any field offices, that don't have any ground game. Uh, they're just hoarding money, I guess, to pay Donald Trump's legal bills. Today, we face a choice between two very different visions for our nation. One focused on the future and the other focused on the past. And we are fighting for the future. And in our vision of the future, we see a place where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. A future where no child has to grow up in poverty, where every senior can retire with dignity, and where every worker has the freedom to join a union. We see a future with affordable health care, affordable child care, and paid leave, not for some, but for all. We see a future where every student has the support and the resources they need to thrive, and a future where no teacher has to struggle with the burden of student loan debt. So as an example, our administration has forgiven student loan debt for nearly 5 million Americans and twice as much for our public servants, including our teachers. We see a future where every student has the support and the resources they need to thrive and a future where no teacher has to struggle with the burden of student loan debt. So as an example, our administration has forgiven student loan debt for nearly 5 million Americans and twice as much for our public servants, including our teachers. Teachers like Tanya Cabeza, who I met recently in Philadelphia. Tanya was first in her family to go to college, and she had been, like many, paying off her student loans for 20 years. And she told me, she was like, look, I, I, I at many times wondered, would I have to leave this profession I love to just be able to pay my bills? But I did it, but I didn't leave because I love what I do and I understand the importance. But making decisions then about what she could afford in terms of her daily obligations and dealing with these loans. And after 20 years, she still owed $40,000 in student loans. And we forgave it all. When she learned, she told me, she said, when she learned that her loans had been forgiven, she said, well, me and my children knew our lives had changed, and we were just dancing, dancing.